All right, so today uh, I want to show you something that I built recently, and that's this little contraption right here. <clears throat> now you might be thinking, what in the world is that thing? Okay, give you a little bit of a backstory here. Um, sometimes I get in a job that has a bunch of small parts like this one right here. And if you've done any kind of sandblasting, uh, you know that you know you have to use those rubber gloves in a blasting cabinet of course and little things like this are real pain to try to pick up and it's even harder to try to blast them because you can't move stuff around to get the whole thing uh, also say a piece like this like an old bronze spring that you don't want to lose off of a, a vintage carburetor uh, if you pick something like that up there's always a risk that it could be launched out of your hand by the the high pressure air so you really don't um, you have to be really careful with stuff like this. I've been lucky in that respect. I haven't had any issues losing people's parts, but uh, the risk is always there. So I was working on this job a couple weeks ago, and uh, not this one, different one, but I was working on the job and I was getting really frustrated because it was taking me forever to go through these little parts and do everything. And then I was taking maybe, you know, two or three parts at a time, putting them in the blaster, or, well, actually, I usually like four or six or something like that to keep them together. I don't put 40 parts in the blaster because that's just too much to try to take care of. If I do put a lot in, I'll put in two containers and then I'll pick one out of a container, blast it and put it in another one. In case you know you have to do that, that's one thing you can do. But I was getting frustrated because I was running behind on this job. So I wanted to come up with a way to um, efficiently blast very small parts so I didn't have to pick up each one and try to turn it. Uh, and this is what I come up with right here. This doesn't have any kind of formal name. This is just a uh, just a, a basket or a parts basket for sandblasting small parts or abrasive blasting. I don't really do sandblasting here. I use real fine abrasive. But this is what I come up with. So I'm going to show you how I made this. And it's real simple to do. Anyone can make this. Uh, you don't need special equipment or anything like that. And I'll show you what's involved here. Of course, um, <clears throat> the wing nut. I hope you know what that is. Uh, and a couple of aluminum end caps, top and bottom. And this here is a um, this is a 20 mesh uh, sleeve that you use in a T strainer like this one here. And this is what I got it out. This was a T strainer off my old uh, vapor blaster prototype. And if you haven't seen one of these, uh, they just go in like this, and they act like a, you know, basically like a house water filter. Water goes in, and the dirt gets caught in the screen, and then it's, it's made to take out large uh, pieces of debris so it doesn't continue through the line. Pretty simple concept. So what I did is I went through my scrap pile and my junk parts. I'm kind of a pack rat, so I keep stuff in case I can use it later. And and that's what I come up with here. Now, anyway, to continue, uh, there's a couple of, you got the screen there and a couple caps. This is just a piece of threaded rod you can get at the hardware store. This is a quarter 20 thread and a couple nuts that are jammed together so they don't lose their place on the thread. Uh, this is a piece of aluminum tubing. This is 6061. Uh, it's air actually aircraft tubing. I was working on a project years ago and I had some left over. Um, I'll tell you where you can get all this stuff. Okay, these pieces here, I turned these on a lathe and you can see the protrusions. There's like a step here or a, uh, a flange. And of course this is to keep the screen on center so it doesn't shift. It keeps everything on center and symmetric. It's pretty important to do that. If you don't have a metal lathe, don't have access to one, Instead of getting some round stock, what you should do is get a piece of 1 8 inch thick aluminum sheet. Um, 6 inches by 12 inches should work. That should be plenty enough for these two pieces. And then what you do, if you haven't figured it out already, is whatever strainer you have, you want to take some measurements here and find a nominal um, a nominal diameter and if you're buying this from McMaster car they have the blueprints on there and they'll tell you exactly what the dimensions are of this part like this one is 2.225 I think is the nominal inner diameter so what I did when I turned this I made this 
2.2. Uh, it doesn't have to be exact, and I left a little bit of slop in there, so you can easily put that over there. You don't have to struggle with it. But let's say you're using an aluminum sheet. What you do is you find out the dimensions from McMaster.com, establish a center point with a uh, center punch, take a center punch and put a divot in your material. Then you take the large diameter and you lay that out on the sheet with a compass. And then you grab a scroll saw. And if you don't have a scroll saw, I'm sure you know someone who has one or a band saw. And you can cut out aluminum with a scroll saw. I've done it many times. It's no big deal. Um, the only concern uh, with the scroll saw is you might have to lubricate the blade with some candle wax or paraffin wax works fine for that. You can use cutting oil too, but it'll, it will make a mess out of your saw and if you're borrowing it, they probably won't like that you did that. So smear some candle wax while the saw is running on the sides of the blade and that will keep the aluminum from galling up in your teeth and reapply that every so often while you're cutting this. So you go ahead and you cut out the sheet and you cut out the circle and then you file the edges and you cut out this, these small pieces. And what you'll be left with is four discs. You'll have two discs this diameter and then two discs the smaller diameter. After you do that, um, you take the large disc and you put it on a bolt or a threaded rod like this and put some epoxy down and then put the small disc on top of it. Uh, screw down a nut like this on top, you know, tighten it down and let the epoxy set up. And whenever you're finished, you'll have a disc like this. Now the nice thing about this is even though I got this out of a tea strainer, you don't have to buy a tea strainer. You can get the replacement screens for these and they're dirt cheap. I, I can't quote a price on this because I forget exactly, but it was between uh, 2 and $3 a piece. Maybe it was like around $2. So when you order any other material, get a few of these. And I say get a few because what's eventually going to happen as you're blasting is um, the abrasive is naturally going to wear through. This is stainless steel. So even so, it's, it's going to wear through that mesh at some point. Uh, if you can find a screener that's uh, coarser mesh than this, like 12 or 14, and has a thicker wire, that would be even better. I haven't been able to find one like that, but I'm not saying they're not out there. If you can find one with a coarser mesh, that would be even better. But this is 20 mesh and it works just fine. Uh, so let's see what's next here. Oh, yeah, this, this aluminum tubing, you can get this from McMaster.com. Now, if you already have some of this material uh, in, or don't want to use McMaster.com for whatever reason, you might be able to use a piece of plastic PEX tubing from the hardware department. Uh, you could cut it to this size, and uh, that should work too. But you have to have a spacer. If you try to sandwich these two together like this on this rod and tighten them down with it with the wing nut what happens is and I found this out when I first built it is it'll actually compress the screen and it'll start I didn't think it would compress like that but it compresses and starts bending to the side and that screws stuff up because you have a narrow spot and parts get stuck in there and then this never really tightens up and it can actually come off while you're blasting and that that's not a good situation so what you do when you have, once you have your discs uh, cut and you have your um, sleeve, put them together like that and then you want to take a measurement between the inner steps on these discs, not between the outer discs here. You want it in between these steps because uh, you have to take into account those inner protrusions. So that's what I did and I made this the same size, maybe a few thousandths bigger. It's not really critical. Uh, I just don't want it to squish. You know, I don't want a compression on this because it distorts it. So what happens when you put this together? Um, I'll show you here quickly. When you put this together. You can tighten this down as much as you want, and that screen can still uh, has a little bit of. It's not much play, but just enough that it can slide in there, and that's fine. And most of those screens are built to a certain tolerance, so they're none of them. If you build this for one screen, the replacement screen should be so close that you don't have to modify it at that point. So that's the way this worked out. It works perfect. Okay, um, let's see. What else I was going to show you here? Oh, one other thing too. 
uh, when you're loading parts in here, this can come apart and fall apart. So I thought about gluing this, but the problem with that is, is when you need to um, uh, change the screen out for a new one, then it's going to be glued fast and then you're stuck. Uh, you could run some hot glue on the outside or maybe even um, silicone to make a temporary um, to make this a temporary joint but it's not really necessary you just kind of hold it up like this drop your pieces in and uh, it's really no big deal go like that put it on so and once you do that you can go ahead and blast and these will be held captive in there they can't go anywhere and then I left this longer here because it acts as a handle my glove won't get in the way and if you want to get real creative you can make a uh, you know a steel or aluminum base for this you really don't need to this is just fine here so when you're making the discs when you're deburring it you might want to put a little chamfer on this inner protrusion that will help center the screen when you put it on that's an option if you want to do that okay so uh, now that I've gotten over that rather long-winded segment of the video, um, I wanted to demonstrate this for you. So I got out some rather pathetic, pathetically corroded parts I found around my shop in various stages of deterioration. And um, I even threw a penny in there. But I'm going to throw these in that basket and show you that this thing actually does work. So let's go ahead and do that. Like I said, you don't want to fill it up too much because the one part will interfere with the other part getting um, the blasting stream coming in. But let's put a pretty good amount of parts in there and just set, whoops, I forgot the spacer. Let's put that in there. Tighten that up so it won't come loose, and those parts will spin in there. So let's go uh, give this thing another test run. Okay, we are back from the blaster, so let's see how these turned out. I ran these uh, probably about a total of four minutes, maybe five minutes. I didn't turn the timer on, but I think that's what it was. That's quite a long time for small parts in a blaster, actually. Uh, but still, it's faster than if I would have done them individually. Anyway, all these come out nice. It's like new old bolts. See where I blew all the corrosion off that one? I had to go back a couple times because I saw some areas on this one here that I still see some black corrosion. It didn't get the inside either. I see there's some grease in there. Grease is tough to blast off anyways. It acts like masking tape. But that actually got down in those threads even. But they turned out pretty good. And that's what I used on uh, the bulk of these parts right here. Things like this I didn't. Uh, pieces like this of course. And it's best with things like this. Um, look, I mean they would fit in there but you might as well just hold these by hand and do them but all this small stuff like this I put everything in the basket and blasted it so um, and by the way I got a old this is one of my this belongs to this job here this is an old I think that's uh, belongs to an old knucklehead it's a really nice old brass carburetor l and &L manufacturing so that's uh, that's an old guy there but it, that brass turns out beautiful with vapor blasting. So I figured I'd show you that while I was doing this. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do <clears throat> is since I'm working on this, these small parts and I need to vapor blast them, I'm going to reuse this and do some um, vapor blasting because it's even harder to handle these small things in the vapor blaster because the, the glass beads act like oil. I mean, it's everything's slippery. Everything slides out of your hand in a vapor blaster because, you know, the beads are like little tiny ball bearings. So I'll throw these in here and run a batch through the blaster. 
Yeah, I'll put in a few more here. Save me some trips. That should be good. Get some of these fasteners out of the way. That's enough for now. And I'll throw these in the vapor blaster and run these and show you how these turn out. Take a look at these now. One nice thing about this is you can uh, sandblast them, blow them off, vapor blast them, rinse them and dry them right in there without ever having to take them out. Though I would probably check them between processes. So let's take this thing apart here. See what happened. I guess that's everything. That's a piece of fiber there. I was wondering why that wasn't taking a finish. That's a fiber washer. Uh, but everything else, like this little tiny piece I was concerned about losing, that little bronze washer, that turned out nice. It's satin finish. Now all the rest of these look good. I processed these for approximately, I don't know, maybe about three minutes to, to get a uh, uniform finish on these. Looks pretty good. This one here I might have to put in, there's a slight stain on it. I don't know if that's because I didn't uh, sandblast it long enough or what. But everything else, all these little tiny parts come out good. This one here, slightly, a um, little bit of flash rust on it because it's steel. I can get rid of that. But anyway, yeah, that's, you know, that's one of the advantages of this thing is to, um, you know, everything's confined and uh, makes your processing a lot more efficient when you're doing vapor blasting. Now I just thought of something. I'm showing you how to make one of these things and I uh, didn't realize that maybe one of these, maybe something like this is already available online. Uh, I, I didn't look it up whenever I was in a hurry to get these parts done a couple weeks ago. I didn't have the luxury of looking it up on the internet to order something like this. So you might want to look around before you even attempt to build something like this. There might be something available. But, if there's not, um, there's always this thing you can build. Okay, that's pretty much it for now. So I'll be seeing you guys next video.